to applications in education. That's our course title. And in this uh, course, I'm your lecturer. My name is Dr. Gikandi Joyce. Uh, we shall be with you through this course to uh, be able to focus and uh, attain the purpose of this course. Um, our topic today is on um, computer software. That's our topic. And uh, now, remembering that we have covered other topics, all this is our second topic. It means then we build on uh, the ideas, all the knowledge we acquired in the previous lessons. Um, now, when we talk about computer software, what are we referring to? Or what do we want to understand? I recap from the previous lesson, we talked about various components of computers. We had six of them, from hardware to computer software, people, data, and uh, the others. So um, why we have focused on computer software before data, uh, or rather before the others, is that it will bring the basis of seeing the role of other components. So it's a key component among the other components. We said all of them are elephant, so we cannot get the real value of computing when you don't have one of them, or the computer system is not going to function. So now we come to our topic, computer software. So in this topic, we have uh, two key objectives. We want to understand what are the categories of software that we have. We also want to understand what uh, or how do each of these uh, categories function? What do they entail? And uh, that we are going to explore specific applications as part of software. And uh, this will be in one of the categories, application software. So we are going to explore and uh, see uh, what are the commonly used software. So at the end of the lesson, then we are going to have understood that we have various categories. Uh, what is the purpose of each category, and uh, what are examples in each of those categories, and maybe what is the, their area of use. And uh, at a later uh, lesson, then we shall continue to explore further on uh, some related aspects. So there are two categories of computer software. And earlier I said computer software is a collective term. And uh, when we say there are two categories, it also means each of the categories we shall mention, it is inclusive of other subcomponent is a category. So we have two categories, operating systems, or what we usually abbreviate as OS, or operating software. So different text or books, we'll call them by that term. We also have customized or what we commonly call application software. Those are the two major categories. So how do each of them mean? And what does it entail? What are its subcomponent? So operating systems, in um, a very direct definition, they provide a link uh, that uh, brings together the um, hardware and the application software. So they serve as a link between the computer hardware and the application software. So they provide a platform on which application software learn. This would mean when you have your computer, you have to start by installing um, our operating system because anything else you do after that can only be done when you already have an um, operating system. So it is therefore a platform on which now the other category is going to be learning. So that's what we call operating systems. Also note that we have various um, uh, types of operating systems like MS-DOS, meaning Microsoft Disk Operating System. Microsoft is a company that manufactures software, so they call it with that name, MS-DOS. Um, it is not commonly in use today, but it was the earlier fashion. Then today we have Windows, which is commonly used, especially where we live around us. In most of developing countries, we have Windows. It's uh, very common because of various capabilities that it has. Then we have Unix. We have Linux as other examples, and many others. These are just a few examples of operating systems. 
So uh, for this course, we are going to be learning on Windows uh, operating systems. And because the applications we are going to be learning, they will be hosted on Windows. Um, so we say that you need operating systems uh, for us to learn the other type. The other category is application software. So application software, uh, these are simply applications users uh, apply or use to do their specific task. So this is what we'll be interacting with every day. And that reminds us we don't actually directly interact with the operating system. But what we interact with is the application software as we do our tasks. So when we talk about specific tasks, it could be a task for, um, as we look at uh, the content there, of doing a document that is text-based. Then we use a specific application like word in word processing. That's why we have word processors. So then it means our specific task means is in word processing based on your needs. So when you say specific task, that means they are based on the user needs. Another day, you want to uh, manage some huge tabular data. So then your need will be to manage that content that you have, data that you have connected in the, from the field. So then you would say, I will need a spreadsheet because it has a capability, as we are going to be looking at shortly, to allow me manipulate huge tabular data. So another, need, another area of application software is database management system. Um, um, I complete this word, database management system. Um, that would mean um, you have a system or a need that you want to do and requires a system that allows you to manage your data, how you organize it, how you manipulate it, how you store it, how you retrieve it. So database management, how you integrate it. So database management system allows all those functionalities. We are going to be seeing the capabilities of those systems in a later topic. Uh, um, then we have presentation software like Microsoft uh, PowerPoint, MS, you know this means um, Microsoft as the uh, creator of the software. Uh, PowerPoint is one of the most commonly uh, presentation software, it's based on Windows, it is very easy to use, it's easily associated with the functionalities we have in word processing and therefore when you learn word processing it becomes very easy for you to adapt to using PowerPoint. It only brings new capabilities for enriching your presentation. But basically, most of the things you do are based on word processing. We are going to be exploring that further. The next type of application software is what we shall call internet applications uh, services. So all this relates to all applications or technologies based on the internet because um, they are based on, uh, or they come as applications. So we shall explore them. There are so many and others continue to emerge as technologies advance. So our uh, basic one is email, whether you're in Gmail or Yahoo email, that's an application internet based. Search engines like Google, Google Scholar, etc. Cloud tools, we are going to be looking at what is cloud, what is cloud computing. Um, so then we have graphic applications. We shall not dwell on that much, but they are meant to allow you to uh, do some graphical or manage create some graphical content, uh, like when you want to do a business card, when you want to do a calendar for your organization, those are applications you would use. And MS Publisher is a common one, Coledro, among many others. Uh, it requires you to be more creative, to be able to use those graphical applications. Of course, there are more advanced ones that you may need to learn as a specialization, but those are the most common applications, uh, application software. And uh, out of these, we are going to use them as a basis to illustrate or to learn how to become users of computers by exploring each of them. So let's look at each of them. Uh, and uh, here, our purpose is to have a highlight on the purpose they serve. What do they allow us to do? What is their key strength? So it is upon that then that you know when I have this purpose, then I can use word processor, I can use spreadsheet. So for example, word processor, they allow us to write and edit and print text-based document. So anything that's majorly text, we use that to manipulate it. means we can format, we can have enhanced editing, and we can continually update. 
It also comes with the capability of checking accuracy uh, through grammar checks uh, that are built in. Um, most of you may have used that. Um, uh, it allows you to remove or to be able to insert uh, so anywhere in part of the document that comes with what we can call flexibility. And like a document you are doing on a typewriter, when you cannot just imagine you are going to add some content just anywhere. So one processor allows you to do that in a fairly automated way and a fairly controlled way and in a way that you're able to manipulate how your content looks like. Then you also have full control of your page and how you present it. We have functionalities when you come, uh, we, we get to practicals, you'll see how to have control of the page layout, etc., by using failures, commands, or features in the program. So you can also merge text. That means you can uh, combine two documents you can also insert graphics if they are elephant, you have picked them up, it's part of your yeah, is work. So then you can insert that, you can have illustrations, etc., and uh, be able to manipulate them as part of your document. You can also have automatic table of content. That is one of the practical topics on how to use automatic table of content. You can also create uh, tables uh, that can do basic arithmetic, so like you're doing a budget for your thesis, you're doing a budget for your workshop at work, then it can support that, uh, but up to the level of basic arithmetic. Uh. So, um, so that is what you can do in word processors. Spreadsheet is another category of software. So spreadsheets come with key capabilities, and these capabilities means what are the distinguishing characteristics? What do they do best? So one, they have complex computational capabilities. So you can do computations um, from arithmetic to advanced computations or calculations. Uh, so those things you'll be exploring uh, through the practical uh, sessions. Then we have management of massive tabular data. You have collected a lot of data that is massive tabular, so you can easily organize it, manage it using an Excel sheet, which is part of spreadsheet software. Um, data analysis, they come with an data analysis capabilities uh, specific to your needs, but of course there could be limitations. Of course today we have more advanced data analysis software, uh, but um, uh, spreadsheets also has quite some uh, substantial level of data analysis capabilities. Uh, graphical presentation. So once you analyze your data, once you manage your data, you can also be able to transpose it to graphical format. You can draw pie charts, bar graphs, and that means we say pictures speak louder than words. You can make your work more illustrative by using spreadsheets. Database management systems, um, we say they allow you to manage your data better to store it better, to retrieve it better, to enhance your ability to integrate processes. Uh, so in this case, uh, we can uh, put their capabilities in various aspects, all according to various functionalities. One, database have improved security. That means you can be able to protect your data from unauthorized manipulation. We shall be doing something on security at a later topic. Then sharing of data, it means different departments can share data, admissions can see what uh, the examination department is doing, uh, hostel department can be able to access data for students who have registered to join the university, that means they can share data to improve efficiency within the process, and improve collaboration. Data integrity means that you'll be able to know that your data is uh, free from unintended manipulation. So you can, and it will also be collect. So integrity will lead to the issue of uh, eliminating unintended manipulation. Also accuracy, so that you don't type the wrong admission number, it has to be right. Uh, so it will always give you an alert. Huh? That's about integrity. Eliminating redundancy means you don't have overlaps in the data so that you avoid a lot of duplication. That's what we mean by redundancy. Economies of scale means it comes with efficiency to save, to be able to consolidate processes, to make them more efficient. And it doesn't matter whether you have a thousand students, 50,000 clients in a bank, so it will always need one 
or it will you need one database to manage all those people. As you increase in size, your database will continue to support you, of course, to the capability it is designed for. So that is what they do. Of course, they have limitations on uh, database systems. They can be advanced, and uh, they have continued to advance. They are supporting the modern systems we have. For example, any any uh, uh, management information systems has a database behind. And due to these uh, capabilities that are advanced, they are expensive to design and implement. That means you need to invest uh, in them. Then they also require an expert to administer. So you have also to invest in that. Now, as we move towards the end, I want to recap and as I recap, I also want us to get some exercise to do or assignment that we shall have to engage with as we um, move forward to enhance our understanding. So one of the assignments I want to give, I want you to uh, focus on presentation software as part of the assignment. Remember, we didn't mention a lot about them. So I want you to draw. So read more about them and then through what are their key capabilities. I already mentioned they are closely associated with word processors, but identify their key capabilities just like we have done for the other software. So identify their key capabilities. That is um, uh, one of your assignment. Um, so I want to give two questions for the assignment. So you explore the purposes and capabilities of uh, presentation software like PowerPoint in a critical manner. The other part uh, is on operating system. So I want you to um, read further about operating systems and identify specific functionalities within an operating system. What are the failure subcomponents that make operating system provide the operating um, platform? So what are the uh, functionalities within the operating system. So there are sub elements and we call them utilities in the operating system. So uh, read more and uh, analyze each of the common utilities we get through operating system or that is hosted within the operating system. So these are the utilities that are linked to the operating systems and uh, that way you will have a deeper understanding of why we are saying operating system provides a learning platform. So, and with that, we are able to um, get to the end of our session. And uh, the only thing that remains for you uh, is, of course, to reflect on uh, whether you can be able to apply that knowledge as we move on to the other topics. It will form the basis of our other uh, topics that we shall cover in a later session. So focus on your assignment and we shall revisit that at a later date. So we end our session there. Uh, thank you. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.